the fermentation of meats and fish has been around for centuries. Much like cheese making, it was used as a way to preserve and save sources of protein and fat. Historically, meat was preserved by adding large amounts of salt. This dries the meat, lowering the water activity, and inhibiting microbial growth, thus extending shelf life. Unknown to those preparing the meat, some of the salt that is used in the preservation process contain nitrates. During the curing process, nitrate, NO3, is reduced to nitrite, NO2. These newly formed nitrites help serve as antioxidants and prevent the growth of salmonella. They do this in the form of nitric acid when they can easily permeate cell walls disrupting pathogenic growth. The nitrites can be further reduced to nitric oxide, which is the compound that gives fermented meats their characteristic pink color. Nitrites are especially important in the control of Clostridium botulinum due to the fact that meats are fermented in an anaerobic environment. There are three ways to inoculate meat to start fermentation. First is a natural inoculation where the bacteria and molds naturally present in the meat, air, and equipment are used. However, this is highly variable because of changes in the local microbiome and thus it is seldom used. Secondly, the leftovers of one batch of meat can be mixed into the next batch to inoculate it. This method is called batch inoculation or backslopping. It is still used by some small artisan producers, but this method has a much higher risk of microbial contamination. Starter cultures are the most widely used inoculation technique currently used by large-scale commercial producers. They provide a safe and consistent way to inoculate large amounts of meat with the correct microbes. In 2007, Topps Meat Company, one of the largest producers of frozen hamburgers in the United States, was linked to an outbreak of E. coli 0157H7. The company practiced backslopping by adding leftover meat not used during the previous day into the next day's batch. A recall was ordered for the lot of beef linked to the outbreak. However, because a clear break in production could not be established, 21.7 million pounds of ground beef, a year's worth of production, were recalled and tops went out of business six days later. In sausage production, nitrites and salt have a limited inhibitory effect on lactic acid fermenting bacteria, allowing them to outcompete other bacteria that could spoil the meat. To help promote the growth of these bacteria, dextrose is added. As the lactobacilli consume this dextrose, they produce lactic acid, dropping the pH. This acts as a preservative and helps denature proteins, giving the meat its texture. The USDA requires that for a sausage to be considered shelf-stable, it must have a pH less than 5.0 and a water activity less than 0.87. The rate of pH drop helps determine the flavor profile of the sausage. A fast drop in pH creates a tangy summer style sausage, while a slow, more controlled drop creates a milder salami style sausage. To help lower the moisture content, some processors add penicillin mold to the outside of sausages. The mold helps draw out water from the sausage, lowering the water activity and promoting case hardening. Additionally, the penicillin helps moderate lactic acid bacteria growth, lowering the tang of the sausage. Two good examples of fermented meats are hakarl and fish sauce. Hakarl is an Icelandic delicacy and is also considered one of the world's most disgusting foods. It is so bad that chef Gordon Ramsay couldn't even swallow it. But don't take our word for it, let this viking tell you. Pardon me, do you have something that resembles fermented fish cheese? Slathered in ammonia? Yeah, mm-hmm. We got something like that. It's called How Carl. Sometimes Vikings found a basking shark. Then, when Sven the Malodorous tried to eat that shark, Sven died. Oh no, not Sven. He was my favorite. You, being a clever Viking, realized that basking shark is poisonous. But through what had to be a long stretch of trial and error, Oh no! And a lot of poison Vikings, you figured out the following. When you did find a basking shark, it was a cause for celebration. First, you gut it. Remove its head. Now you bury the shark in a shallow hole full of sand and gravel and throw heavy stones on top to press it and leave it for 6 to 12 weeks. Then you dig it up, cut it into strips, and hang it to dry. While the shark was buried, 
Bacterial reactions in the process of fermentation neutralize the toxins and render the shark edible. But how does it taste? Do you want more? <laughs> That's the grossest stuff in the world. That is terrible. Icelandic people, I'm denouncing being a Viking. Fish sauce, known in Thailand as Nam Pla, is a condiment used in almost all Thai cooking. It is made by mixing anchovies with salt and putting the mixture in a jar with even more salt. A weight, usually rocks, is placed on the fish and the jar is covered. It sits in the sun for up to a year. Here's how it's made. 35 tons of fresh local anchovy is mixed with water and sea salt and then left to dissolve and clarify naturally for two years. So this is the fish sauce directly from the fermentation tank. After two years, it is so pure, so clean, it's ready to drink right now. Aloy, very nice. Michael Pollan wrote extensively on fermentation in his book, Cooked. Pollan said, pit fermentation is still practiced here and there around the world. I've seen whole cabbages fermenting in dirt trenches in China, a practice also common in certain parts of Austria and Poland. The Inuit still bury fish in the Arctic tundra and in the South Pacific. Starchy root vegetables like cassava and taro are buried in pits lined with banana leaves. In Iceland, not long ago, I had the dubious privilege of tasting hakarl, shark that has been buried underground for several months until it develops the texture and blinding ammonia stink of an exceptionally strong cheese. What began as a practical necessity to get through the winter without starving has become a cherished delicacy, at least among Icelanders. Whenever I read that rotten is a culturally constructed concept, as anthropologists tell us, I think back to my Hakarl and nod in assent. Credit! Morgan Freeman. He knows how to speak. I'm going to be like him. That's right.